here that uh, I think I preached it one time and, and I really don't remember even preaching it. You know, sometimes the Lord will give you things and you just like you you get your scriptures and all and sometimes it's, it's, it's really not to be preached. It's for you. And so and I've got a lot of those that I've never never really preached anywhere. It's just like the Lord was speaking to me and as dumb as I am, I'm thinking it's a message, you know, because, you know, when you do travel and preach and stuff, you're always, Lord, give me, give me something, you know. And, uh, and sometimes the Lord gives us things that uh, it may be just, just for you, just for you. You know, Paul said in one place, I would have given you meat, but I couldn't because, you, you know, envy and strive, and I could just give you uh, milk. So he was a very wise man. A lot of times we... Uh, I remember younger days when I preached that I would be somewhere, nobody knew me, and I would be frustrated with the people, and I said, well, listen, I, I, you may not like what I'm saying, but I'm gonna shove it down your throat. You know, I'm going, in other words, I'm gonna get this word out. Whether you like it or whether you don't, I'm gonna preach this word. That's not a very good attitude to have, but when, you, when you're young and, you know, you're just, uh, well, I don't know, that wouldn't be an excuse either. Since I can't think of an excuse, Lord, just let that go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, but anyway, uh, the Lord does give you messages that uh, he told the prophets. He said, I'm going to, you know, give them a word, and don't you go say this word, and they're not going to receive you. They're hard-headed, and they're, they're not going to receive you. And you, you, know, you think, well, why go at all, you know? So can you imagine the Lord giving you a word and say, okay, I want you to go over here at the first church and preach this over here at the first church. <coughs> And they're not going to receive you. Matter of fact, they're going to get mad at you. But I just want you to go over and preach it. And you, you're like, well, why are they even preaching? I think a lot of times it's the Lord wants to be fair with everybody. He wants to warn us. Uh, and he wants to encourage us. But there's also warnings that the Lord gives. And this message uh, is not really much of a warning. But it's more like an awakening. An awakening individually, I think. And this... This, back then when these scriptures were coming to me, it, it really helped me to be more understanding uh, of others that are Christians. Uh, and let me, let me just read a few of these scriptures. You, you'll kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. If you have your Bibles, we're going to open at 1 Peter chapter 2. And, uh, and then I'm going to read a, a scripture in uh, Matthew, but in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, and drop down to about verse 11, okay, it says, Dearly beloved, that lets you understand he is talking to the church, he said, But I, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Yes. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil, speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So we're supposed to have, have good works. He says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be the king or supreme. Folks don't like that particular verse of scripture because, uh, like me, they uh, have a fuzz buster in their vehicle to warn them that if they're speeding or not. And uh, sometimes we 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 speed thinking that it's okay because we're not under the law. So, but submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. 
every law that man has, we're to submit ourselves. All sometimes I say, you know, if it's against the word of God, then we do we don't have to submit to it. But the speed limit, thou, you know, don't do this and don't do that. Don't do drugs. If you get caught doing drugs and you're young and gets put in jail, what do you do? You leave him there till he pays his price because that's what Jesus taught. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's what Jesus taught until they pay the furthermost furling. In other words, if they pay whatever the charge is, you leave them there. They did it. That's the only way people learn that there's a penalty against sin. There's a penalty against wrongdoing. And this is also the reason the scriptures tells us to submit yourself to every ordinance of man. Well, you don't go to jail. Isn't that good news? You know, it's just wisdom, amen? Okay, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors, or unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In other words, as I've oftentimes said from this pulpit, behave yourself. Why can't people just behave yourself? Amen. You get to stay out of jail. You don't have to pay no fines. And you get to go to heaven at the same time and be blessed, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Where is the will of God? Now, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Now look at that, honor all men. He's not talking about people in church. He said honor all men. And men, it would be including women. This is the world, honor everybody, give honor. You honor people, Praise you know, and that's something that is gone today. People have no, re let's do it another way, respect everybody. Yeah, that's gone. You see what I'm saying? To honor somebody is to respect them. Respect the people that's in the world. You used to be in the world. You used to do the same thing they were doing. Amen. But God had mercy on you, and I'm believing God will have mercy on them. So we are to honor all men. All, somebody say all. That's every one of these rascals out here. We are to honor them. We are to respect them. Amen. Respect all men. Love the brotherhood. Now he's talking about to the, the Christian people. Those that, have, uh, that are in Christ. Those that are born again. The, work, the, the biggest problem with Christians is we don't want to do that because we say, well, if he or she was my brother, he wouldn't have done that or he wouldn't have done that to me. Amen. We, don't, we try to bypass some of these verses of Scripture, and we, we try to come up with a reason not to love the brotherhood. You know, well, he's Church of Christ. Well, he's Church of God. Well, he's a Pentecostal. He's this. He's that. You know, and as if we're attacking everybody. I, I just tell you the truth. I believe God is tired of us attacking one another. I believe he's tired of it. I believe he's tired of us attacking one another. We are the brotherhood, amen? And listen, God knows who are the tares and who's the wheat. I don't know. God knows those that are really born again and those that are not really born again. I don't know. So I have to treat everybody on the same level because I don't know. Only God knows that, amen? Because listen, in my lifetime, I've seen men and women that I thought were holy as holy could be and turn around and fall into deep, Terrible sin. Then I've heard, seen other people that wasn't even saved live more a uh, clean moral life than most Christians live. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So we don't, we, don't, we don't balance our love for people by what they did or what they do or what they're going to do or what they look like, whether they're tall or short, fat or skinny, no matter. Everybody, amen, is people. And we are to honor all people, respect everybody. But honor all men, but to me it's like especially love the brotherhood. It's honored all men, but now you got to love the brotherhood. You see what I'm saying? He didn't say honor all men and honor the brotherhood. He said honor all men and love the brotherhood. Amen. Those in Christ. Amen. Amen. Fear God. Then he says honor the king. At this time, if this was written, don't you understand? This was Nero. 
And he was killing Christians. He was putting up on uh, 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 crosses and burning them alive, torturing them, feeding them to lions. Back in the Book of Martyrs, they were saying that he was putting Christians and putting them on these crosses and poles in his garden to lighten his garden at night as human torches. This was an evil, the most evil man that you could, you could think of. Even more evil than the, the current president, amen. But he said, I want you to honor the king. He didn't say love the king. He said, but I want you to honor him. Now, isn't it marvelous here how he separates? He doesn't say to honor all men, but then he gets, he loved the brotherhood, fear God, but then he says, honor the king. I'm sure that they did not want to honor the king. But Paul is letting people know we have to respect people in this life that we're living in, whether they're good or whether they're bad. We are to respect them. Yes. So as, as much as hard as it may sound to you, listen, the, the present president, as far as I know, hasn't put any Christian on torches in his garden to lighten his garden at night, you know, and he, he's, not, he's not, you know, attacking Christians with lions and all this kind of stuff. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? We are to respect the office, respect those in authority, Respect those that are over us. Amen. Because society works that way. And that's why people get in trouble because we raise our children not to respect authority. And because they don't respect the authority, they wind up how? Either murdered, die young, or in prison. Is that right or not? Because they did not respect authority. They did not honor all men. They didn't honor those in authority over them. Yeah. So if they don't honor them, how in the world would they ever honor God? If we can't submit to one another, you, you can't tell me, if you won't submit to one another, you will not submit to God. Because it doesn't work that way. And the, and, and the apostle is clear. What he's delivered to us here is love the brotherhood most of all. But you've got to honor everybody else, including those in authority over you that you disagree with. You still got to respect them because they're the lawgivers in our nation. Amen. How many understands that? Okay, so I am to, let's go over it again. I am to, I'm going to do a little teaching today. I am going to honor all men. I'm going to honor the king, honor the president, honor the governor, whoever he is. I'm going to give honor. I'm going to respect them for the offices that they hold. Amen. But I'm going to love the brotherhood. He's separating the brotherhood. That's what I want us to understand. He is separating the church, the body of Christ. He said, now these, I don't, I'm not saying honor. You've got to honor. You cannot love somebody without honoring them. Amen. You, you can't love somebody you don't respect. So we have to respect, amen, honor, even those, those that may be in the church, you know, and I'm talking as a whole. Now, I'm not picking on everybody here. I'm talking about as a whole. We, it's hard to respect those that have done us wrong. If somebody's done me wrong, somebody's done you wrong, somebody's done you wrong. It's hard to respect that person. Well, he didn't, he shouldn't have done that to me, or she shouldn't have done that to me. He lied on me, she lied on me. You know, and you just want to, just, you know, just wrap it all up and say, no, well, that is wrong. You're the one that's in error. You're the one that has the problem. Because we are still to love one another even in our faults and struggles that all of us have. Listen, every one of us has had the same problems. If every one of us having the same problems never respected or honored the other, what kind of people would we be? It's a horrible thought. But in Matthew chapter 12, I'm going to read a few verses there. You can go to it if you want to. But in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus is, is speaking and in verse 24, it says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Mm -hmm. I'm in Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. Verse 25, And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself, how shall then his kingdom stand? 
And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Jesus is giving a very clear example of what division does. And sometimes I'll quote this scripture and I'll say also, every marriage that's divided will not stand. Every family that's divided will not stand. Every church that's divided will not stand. Division, oh, listen, division is, is what brings separation. When we are divided, we cannot stand. Years ago, I was up in uh, West Virginia. We had one of our tents up, our smaller tent up there in West Virginia. We were traveling through there, and Sister Glenn and I had to stay at a motel about, I think about 30 miles from where the tent was at, because it was kind of a, a remote area. But I was coming through that, after we and going to the tent, we're driving through that little town to get over there, and I seen this Methodist church off to the side. I'm not picking on the Methodists, but it was a Methodist church. And there was a sign there, in a big, a large sign in, in front of the, of the church, and I wrote it down while well, I wouldn't forget it. It says, a united church against a divided world. That's what the sign said. Well, boy, that gave me a message for that night. You know what I'm saying? A united church against a divided world. What, what a ridiculous statement when you realize the church itself is so divided. It's not united. That's why we have denominations. Denominations just simply tells you it's, it's denominated, it's, it, it's separated. We have denominations. We have literally thousands of organizations and denominations, and whether you call it by the famous names you see, Baptist or Methodist, but it, it, within the Baptist and the Methodist, then you got all these other little Southern Baptists and, you know, and Northern Baptists and all this other kind of stuff. So they're divided. Pentecostal people is the worst than all of them. They're so divided, they have no agreement at all with one another. Not, not at all. In other words, if I were to join up with a particular denomination, if I joined up with the Baptists, I'd have to choose which Baptist I'm going to join up with because that Baptist is not going to have that Baptist guy in their church. If I do, if I joined up with a Pentecostal, if I joined up with the Church of God, then, uh, you know, then the United Pentecostals, they're not going to have anything to do with me. If I join the United Pentecostal, then the Assemblies of God are not going to have anything to do with me. If I join the Assemblies of God, then the the uh, whatever, whatever. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Then there's the independence. <laughs> I'm independent. Yeah, right. You're not, yeah, you're in just as independent as the rest of them is independent. They're all independent too. And what we wound up with, we're all independent of God. Amen. We have separated ourselves from the love of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? We are divided. That's bad enough. Amen. But when the kingdom of God is divided like it is, and we're fighting, and I guarantee you Satan is not divided. He is completely, totally unified in his plan to destroy God's people. He is not divided whatsoever. You understand that? Yeah. So he's not divided, but the church is divided. Who do you think is going to win a battle like that? The one that's not divided is going to win over those that are divided. It's a simple, it's just a simple, that's what Jesus is teaching here. Every kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. It will not stand. It can, and this is why the church has struggled for the past 2,000 years since it was born. Because of division. In the very beginning, there was the Judas, Judaism, amen, the Jews religion, trying to, you know, infiltrate into the Christian church. When it started movement, amen, Paul fought that tooth and nail, amen. Revealed, amen, this is, this is not what God wants, amen. We're not under the law and all the different things that Paul addressed in Galatians and different places in the Bible. He was totally against division. He was for unity, that we believe the same thing, that we have the same purpose, the same vision, the same goals, amen, in life. Because Paul knew, as well as God knows, amen, for sure, we win when we are unified. But when we're divided, we lose. And so it's bad enough for the kingdom of God to be divided, but when the church, our church, the local church, your church, other people's churches, when they're divided, their church begins to lose out 
with God because we cannot prevail over Satan with a division within the body of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. It goes all the way down to us as individuals. Amen. We have to have unity to survive. We have to have unity, amen, to be able, amen, to overcome all the forces of hell that is coming against us, amen. And you know very well, amen, if you're in this thing at all, I'm telling you, you are going through a battle. It's in the mind, most of it, it's emotional, but it is spiritual, amen, and it's coming against the devil. We have to have unity. For instance, here's the scripture here in Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together unless they're agreed? No way. If I'm walking with you and you're walking with me and we're in agreement, we're going we're to be powerful. We're going to walk together. But if we're divided, amen, if my purpose is this way and your purpose is that way, guess what's going to happen? We're not going to accomplish anything because we're going to be struggling against one another. If we have a different vision, if we have a different purpose, amen, our goal for the church, amen, what is our purpose, what is our goal, amen, if we're not unified in that, we can never succeed in what God's called us to do. Amen. We still have long rangers in the kingdom of God. <laughs> By that I mean people that's, they, they, you know, they don't, need, they don't even need Tonto. I mean, you know, they're going to do it to themselves, bless God. Amen? They're going to do it to themselves. I don't need the church. I don't need no pastor. I don't need no ministry. I don't need nobody. I'm going to praise God in my home and watch TV and worship the Lord, and, and that's it. I don't need church. I don't need nobody. That's been a long ranger. It does not work that way. That's why the church was born. That's why it was, it was it put into the place, into the, into the scriptures, amen, that we would be the body of Christ and they would be churches, amen, for us, amen, to come together. You know the reason most people don't, don't want to assemble themselves together, especially as we see that day approaching. We are commanded to assemble ourselves together. You know why most people don't want to do that? Because they can't get along with nobody. <laughs> they can't get along with nobody. Say amen. I mean, it's the truth. Nobody likes nobody. But all of us are saved. I can't figure this out. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, we cannot continue like this, I mean, with this kind of in, uh, attitude, amen, about other people. We are to love the brotherhood. Somebody say love the brotherhood. We're in this thing together. You look across the aisle this way and that way, and I'm telling you what, that person across the aisle and one in front of you, one in the back of you, guess what? They're having the same battle you're having. And we need one another. We need one another to hold one another up, to pray for one another. Instead of getting on the phone and saying, hey, have you heard the latest? <laughs> about who? Oh, about brother so-and-so, about sister so-and-so, you know? What is, what is, what is, I mean, just one that desire to tell me some bad news. Don't tell me nothing good. I want to hear some bad news. Amen. It's horrible what's happening. And listen, I'm not just talking about our church here. I'm talking about all the churches that yes. I have. Listen, I've been in this thing a long time. And, you know, some of you, maybe, maybe Brother John or Brother David, been in it longer than I have. I know Brother David has. Even though I'm older than he is, I got a late start. <laughs> but in all of these years, this is all that I've ever seen in Christianity. Bunch of fussing and fighting and devouring one another, arguing over doctrine, arguing over who's right and who's wrong, what church, where do you got to have the Holy Ghost, you don't have the Holy Ghost, I mean, good, good grief. I mean, we, 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 did, we just got more questions about everybody instead of what we question our own selves, amen. Yes. But all of these years, all I have ever seen now, 50 years, is fussing and fighting and division. Did you hear so he's a, I told you he was of the devil all along. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, what I've seen out of what I feel like is has been called Christianity is look like to me like all of them would be of the devil. You know what I'm saying? Because the devil, I mean, I thought the devil is one supposed to be snarling and arguing and fussing and killing. He comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. I thought he was one supposed to do all this stuff, not Christians. We're not supposed to destroy one another. We're supposed to pray for one another. We're supposed to build one another up in the most holy faith. We're supposed to be there and support one another. We're supposed to love the brotherhood. Well, I would if I could find a brother. I just can't find none. No yeah. 
Yeah, people like that looking for a perfect church. And when they find out, I guarantee you, it would be imperfect. The day they, he walked in the, or she walked in the door. Amen? It's the truth. There is no perfect church. There is no perfect body of gathering of people anywhere that I know. You might find one that's perfect in what they believe. But for God's sake, don't tell them anything opposite of what they believe. Because if you do, you're heading for trouble. You know what I'm saying? You understand what we're saying here? Any, any kingdom, any church, any marriage, any home divided will not stand. It will not stand. Look what Paul said in 1 Corinthians, just a couple of verses here. 1 Corinthians eleven seventeen. He said, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Paul said, man, I, I just don't really want to believe this. <laughs> what, what if Paul was alive today? He would have worded that entirely different. He would have said, I know there's divisions among you. And I, there's no doubt in my mind about that. <laughs> Amen. That's what he would say. But this was at the beginning of the church. 2,000 years ago. Division had already started. Already there were many antichrists. Judaism trying to take over the church. All kinds of things going on. Mystery of iniquity was already working. The devil was at hand. They were among the true church. And not all kinds of problems, amen. And it's been that way now for 2,000 years. But I'm going to tell you something. The Lord Jesus has promised to come back for a church without a spot, yes. a wrinkle, a blemish, or any such yes. thing. And amen. We're not going to go with him until we come to a place that we can honor all men and love the brotherhood, love people, respect people. We've got to return to a respect of others, of others, of what they believe in there, what they don't believe. You know. We've got to, amen. The long ranger attitude, you know, it's like, so many times in our church here, you know, I said, look, let's, let's, you know, when you give, let's give together, let's sacrifice, but let's give in love. I've never got up here and commanded people to pay their tithes. I just figure if you're going to pay tithes because you love God, you're going to do that. You're going to give because you love God. Amen. And that's one way we don't harp on, on offerings. But, but there's one thing that I really do want to and have always emphasized, let's give here. And then, then we then we can support the orphans. We can support the people that we, have, that we know is not a bunch of outlaws. You know what I'm saying? Out in other countries trying to steal people's money. But they're, we've still got long rangers. And they're going to give them. They won't, they won't pay their tithes here. They won't give the church here. I mean, their offerings here, they give it somewhere else. That's their business. But that's not supporting the work that we're doing. That's not being together. That's not, you know, Brother John said something about it when I come to my mind. That's not giving together. That's not being unified in our purpose and what we're trying to do. I had a lady one time years ago. She was said, I've got how much money a month to about 10 different TV preachers. And the 11th one was to me. <laughs> and I wasn't a TV preacher. I was a radio preacher back then, but not a TV preacher. So I was up in Pennsylvania. She was in Pennsylvania. had a meeting up there. She came to my meeting. So I got to talk to her or whatever, and then she, that's when she told me, well, Brother Hayes, you know, I would give you more, but I'm giving, you know, I've got this brother, this brother. And all them brothers on television, they were all different. They didn't even believe the same thing. So she was making sure, she was kind of like some people in India. They're going to serve all these gods. They're going to miss out on nothing, you know. So she was going to give her money to all these preachers, and one of them might be right, you know. You know what I told her? I said, man, what you need to do? You don't, you don't need to send me more. I mean, you need to pick you one of those TV preachers that you really like and give all your money to them. What, you know, what, what use is give somebody $3 yeah. a month? You know what I mean? <laughs> pick you somebody that you can trust, that you really think is, is of God, that you can support, and you're supporting their work because you love the Lord, and they're preaching the right gospel, amen, and they're reaching out to the lost and, and all this kind of stuff and give to them instead of spreading all your little three or four dollars a month out to all these preachers. Amen. Unity is what I'm trying to emphasize here. We've got to be, 
We've got to have the same vision, the same purpose, the same desire. What is our vision? What is our vision as a church? It's to reach the lost. It's to feed the poor. It's to do our mission work. It's to support our orphans, those that, can, those that are truly in need, that cannot help themselves. We, those are the ones that I want to help. I don't want to help some bum up here that's got a sign out there, you know, wanting money, you know, and all this kind of stuff. You drive up, so well, well, I've got some work to do. Oh, uh, I've got a bad leg, you know. He don't look like he got a bad leg of me walking back and forth to all them cars with his, with his thing sticking out there. You don't want me. He's just a bum. I'm not, I'm not going to give to, but I don't like bums. You may like bums. I don't like bums. I love the brotherhood, and I can respect a bum, can know and how I respect a bum and knowing that he's a bum. I'm giving you respect. I know you're a bum. You're a bum. I respect you as a bum. You understand what I'm saying? Am I getting out? Am I losing it here or something? No. But when we're unified in purpose, we accomplish something. We accomplish something together. Amen. When we send money to, to the orphans, they realize that's not me giving that money. That's us giving that money to support those orphans. They understand that. But if I'm going to be the long ranger, I ain't going to mention you guys. You know what I'm saying? If I'm going to be the long ranger, I ain't going to tell nothing about nobody who gave me no, I'm doing this. Yeah. And the long rangers, they want their recognition yeah. that they're doing it. Now look what I've done, you know. Yeah. Brag about, well, you know, my, my, what I've done, my little children over yonder, what I did. That don't work that way. That's not God's way. God's way is with the body of Christ yeah. and yes. it's in unity. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I'm getting off track. I know I am. But Jesus wants us to be one. He prayed in St. John 17 that we would be one. Here's the way he said, Holy Father, keep them through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. That's St. John 17, 11. Then he comes back in St. John 17, 20, just a few verses down, he says this, Neither I pray for these alone, the disciples, but, I, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as they have loved me. See, this is, this is all about the glory. And this is what Jesus is saying. He wants the world, those that are outside, he wants the world to see us unified as one people, one purpose, one desire, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, amen, one church. That's what will glorify God. And that's what he, Jesus is saying, this is what I want the world to see, a people that are one with one another and with God. Can you say amen? Amen. This is, this is the hope. Amen. I believe Jesus' prayers is coming to pass. Amen. I believe we are going to be one people. Amen. I believe we're going to be unified as one people in me because that's my desire. And if it's your desire, we can become one. The only way I know that we can ever have a unity of the faith, I mean believing the same thing, is to have a unity of the spirit. If we can obtain a unity of the spirit, we can have a unity of the faith. But if we can never have a unity of the spirit, amen, we can never be unified in our, what we believe. What, what, what would cause us to have a unity of the spirit? Love. Love will help us to be one in our spirit to one another, or our attitude to one another. One in spirit, one with the Lord in spirit will enable us to be one in faith and then believe in the same thing. We all have the same Bible. All this division, amen, is over one Bible. <laughs> amen. Now I know you got all these hocus pocus translations and all that kind of stuff, but I'm talking about those that will adhere themselves to the King James Version of the Bible or one that is as close, as closer to, than that, and I don't know of any other, 
But the King James Version Bible, we've got one Bible. There's only one God. There's only one Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one man that died for me, amen. Amen. There's only one name given under heaven whereby we all must be saved. Amen. There's only one gospel, amen. Why are we so divided? Amen. See, it makes no sense because it's the powers of Satan because we don't obey that scripture that I read in 1 Peter, respect everybody, honor everybody, but love the brotherhood. Love the brotherhood even when we're divided against one another, even when we can't come to an agreement with one another. That's why I tell people all the time, I say, look, you don't have to believe everything I preach, but if you've got something that's truth, I want to know it. Yes. I don't want to believe a lie and be damned. I want to know the truth. Amen. If you've got a truth that I don't have, praise God, share it with me. Let me know what it is. I'll embrace it. If it's the word of God, I will embrace it. Say amen. amen. And it's the same way. We have to get face everything we believe on what the word of God says, not what some man says, not some, what some denomination teaches, but on what the word of God says. Amen. amen. That's the way we become one. But it cannot happen until we love one another. Love one another. Love the brotherhood. Say amen. amen. And I read this scripture when I, when I was preaching on uh, grace the other week, a few weeks ago. 1 Peter 1 and 22 says, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Unfeigned means sincere, without hypocrisy, unconditionally. That we are to love one another without a hypocrisy unconditionally. Yes. In other words, I can't, I can't figure out something to not love you. <laughs> I'm to love you unconditionally. Yes. No matter what you've said about me. No matter what you've done to me. No matter what you've said to others about me. I've got, no, it doesn't matter. I've got to love you unconditionally. Yes. You're still my brother. Brothers, listen, every family has problems. Amen. <laughs> every family. I'm talking about naturally now. You take a mom and a dad that has five kids or 10 kids or something, oh I'll guarantee you, man, you're talking about fussing and fighting, they're fussing and fighting all the time. But that mom and daddy loves all them children the same. And them brothers and sisters, they might be fighting one another, but don't you step in the middle and try to separate them. They're going to fight them. They're going to unite together and they're going to whoop you. <laughs> Amen. Amen? That's the way families are. They don't like nobody picking them. They, they don't care to pick on one another. But they don't like nobody picking on their brother or their sister. They're going to come to their defense. But that's a kind of an unconditional love. They maybe have problems with one another, but they don't let outsiders destroy their family. Can you say amen? amen. So in the same way, the body of Christ will have the same attitude. Listen, we got problems sometimes with one another. You know, you may not like the way I look or that, or that I wear a suit just about all the time in church, amen. I'm just, I'm just old-fashioned, amen. I'm what they call old school. This is the way I thought you spoke to look when you preached the gospel. I'm not saying you have to look this way. I'm just me, amen. We may not like things about one another, but there's one thing we got to do. We got to love one another unconditionally. That's the word of God. That is a commandment from the Lord. And listen what else he said. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So we're to love with, without hypocrisy. We are to love with unconditional love. And we are to do it intently. And again, without ceasingly. Fervently. Amen. In other words, we want to try. We, it would be the first thing in our minds to love our brother and our sister fervently. Without no kind of a problem, we're going to love one another. Yes, Lord. What kind of church could we have if we love one another like the Bible says to love one another? Amen. What kind of people would we be? We would be a strong people, a victorious people. The enemy couldn't come in and destroy us because we love one another. How many times have I stood here and talked about there's one thing. If we love one another, the devil can never destroy a people that are bound together in love. Amen. I preached that in here I don't know how many times. But we've seen it happen. We've seen the enemy come in. And because of that lack of love for each other, we've seen it happen over and over and over. Just like all other churches have seen it happen over and over and over and over throughout the years. Amen. And it's true. 
But it's because you and I, as individuals, listen, I can't make you love me. Amen? You can't make me love you. But if I make up my mind, I'm going to love you. And you I was all in the, as individuals make up your mind, I'm going to love Brother Hayes in spite of the way he treats me. <laughs> Amen? And I don't, try to, I, don't, I don't believe I treat anybody mean. If I have, I, I apologize. I don't want to. I don't like confrontations. I don't like stuff like that. I like peace and quiet and <laughs> unity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. But we have got to hold on to the love, really true, sincere love that the Bible talks about. We're one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's, that's, you know, that's who we, we worship, just the one Lord. Amen. He's not divided. Amen. We're, we're, we are one body, but we're many members. Can you say amen? amen? We don't have the same function. The foot and the, and, and the, and the, foot and the, and, and the hand don't do the same thing. What I do is different from what you do. I can't do what you do. I wish I, I could do what you do. I wish I could play a piano like Brother John. I can't. I can't. I, 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 you know, I, I'm limited on what I can do. God's gifted me in certain things. But God's gifted you in certain things. Mm -hmm. You just need to find what you're gifted. Finding that gift is finding your place in the body of Christ. Amen. And when you find what God wants you to really do in the body of Christ, I mean, that, there's peace like a river comes in your heart. Because you know you're obeying the Lord. I'm obeying God. I'm doing what God's called me to do. But the one, one body, but many members. But we're all of the same body. There's one head, amen. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen. So we can't say to the hand, the foot can't say to the hand, I don't have any need of you. And vice versa. You know, we, we need one another. The yes. Bible teaches that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It teaches us about the body of Christ and how we need one another yes. to function like we're supposed to function. We are the body of Christ. We are his members in particular. Amen. And the Bible says in Romans 14, and I, I mentioned this in that, in that message on uh, grace. Like this, Him that is weak in the faith receive you, but not to doubtful disputations. Amen. And then it goes down in, in that same passage of scriptures in Romans 14. It goes down through that. You know, it, it talks about, you know, one eats, you know, meat, and one doesn't eat meat, and one eats this, one eats. And it goes on now to talk about that, you know. One esteems one day above another, another doesn't esteem a day above another, all this kind of stuff. And then, but he, he winds up and he says this in the eighth verse. He says, For the, whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Amen. For this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the living and the dead. So, and then on verse 10 it says, Romans 14, 10, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. As it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us, therefore, judge one another anymore. Okay? Let us not, therefore, judge one another anymore. But judge this, rather, that no man put a stumbling block of an occasion to fall in his brother's way. And then he ends, for the kingdom of God not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, so we're all going to give an account of what we've done in our bodies. So it goes back to that, love the brethren. Love the brotherhood. Love the people of God. Amen. We're all struggling. We're all fighting the same enemy. Yes, yes, amen. Yes. We're, we're, we're fighting, amen. We're, we're trying, amen, to make it to the kingdom of God. Amen. We're under attack, amen, in this last day like never before. And so we, and so the word of God is clear. So I want you guys to stand with one another. I want you guys to, you know, to unify yourselves together. Don't run one another down. My God, lift one another up. Pray for one another. Because we're in that time, amen? Oh, Lord. Remember that. Honor all men. <laughs> love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. But love the brotherhood. In 1 John 2 and 8, I'll probably quit here. 
finish this up later. First John 2 and again, and you know these scriptures. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness, even until now. And I'm going to tell you, some of these brothers can actually bring out some hate in you. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Yes, yes. I mean, when somebody does you wrong, a preacher, I mean, I'm talking about preacher. Now, preacher lied to me. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, he stole from me. I went on face this guy right to his face, <laughs> and I said, brother, I said, I've done what I said I would do. I'm a man of my word. He said, Brother Hayes, I know you're a man of your word, but I'm not. If there be a God in heaven, he said that to me. I, I used to have it on record, oh. recorded. He said, I, 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 I'm, I'm not a man of my word. <laughs> Just like that right there. I said, okay. You know, and something started in here. And I could see my, and Glenda, Glenda don't let me, she don't let me say stuff like this, but I, I'm making a point, you know. I could see myself with a ball belt bashing that noggin. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I was that upset because, man, this man had done me. I mean, not only done me wrong, he'd done it really bad wrong, but he was, he's supposed to be a brother. How am I supposed to love this guy? It took me how long? A couple of years. Linda's asked me, tooth and nail. You gotta, you gotta forgive that brother. You gotta forgive that brother. Finally one day, it come, you know, I prayed and prayed and prayed. Finally one day, I knew I'd forgiven him. And I've said this here before, what happened. And I said, God, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to call him on the phone or go over or, or what? So I was on my way to Lowe's, and sure enough, I was loading up some material for this front porch out here. It's been that many years ago. I was loading up stuff, and I turned around and run into the guy. There he was. God set that up. So. And I said, Brother thankful that I've ran into you. I said, I want you to know I forgive you. He looked at me and said, are you kidding? I said, no, I'm not kidding. I forgive you. I just want you to know that. And you know what? After that experience, when I said that, man, I tell you what, you're talking about feeling good. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, I really felt good. Praise I don't know how he felt about it. I don't really care. I knew that I had forgiven him. Amen? Thank and you. I didn't have them Thank kind you. of thoughts about it. Matter of fact, I've been letting him preach for me several times since then. Because I was going to prove that I loved him. Amen. But it's when we walk in our love, see. And I think a lot of times Satan sets us up to where we will have a problem with somebody and it's going to be hard for us to forgive. You understand what I'm saying? I believe he sets us up, calls us to have hard feelings with somebody just to set us up. Because what is his purpose? His purpose is to take you to hell. And he knows that if you get a root of bitterness in here and you don't get rid of it, it's going to turn to hatred. Yes. And if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Amen. And there's no murder is going to be in the kingdom of God. You see Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. That his whole purpose is to turn you against other people. Yeah. That's his whole purpose. Yeah. You can be religious. Listen, you could sing. You could play an instrument. I mean, you could preach. You could do all these things. But if you got hatred in your heart for somebody against anybody, you're not going to make it in the kingdom of God. Amen. You're just fooling Amen. yourself. Amen. Amen. And that's Satan, the way Satan works. We think Satan's just in Satanism. Somebody worshiping the devil or something. No, he, he's our enemy. And he's the enemy of the mind and of the heart. He's trying to bring division in you with God. And when you hate somebody, the Bible tells you clearly, you hate your brother without a cause, you're a murderer. And when you hate somebody, you're separating yourself from God and you're feeling good about it. You don't realize you've separated yourself from God with hatred in your heart and bitterness in your heart, but you have. What's going to leave? Your anointing is going to leave. Your peace is going to leave. You see what I'm saying? And when that leaves you, you're just, now you're by yourself. And all the while, you're real religious. You're thinking everything's cool, everything's okay. And you got hatred in your heart. You've separated yourself from God, and the devil is laughing at you. Yes, amen, amen. Listen, listen. Jesus had a good reason. Matter of fact, he had twelve good reasons to hate his disciples. One of them was the devil. 
And the other 11, Peter gets the big blame on that deal about forsaking the Lord, but all 11 of them turned tail and ran. Yes, 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 yes. He had as good a reason to hate his disciples as anybody. But what did he do? He loved them. Amen. <laughs> he forgave them and he loved them. How could he have loved them that turned against him like that? How could he love Peter when Peter said, hey, I'll stand with you. Lord, not me. I'll, I'll be right there with you. I'll die for you. I'll die with you. You know, sure, man, he's gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. How could Jesus still love him? Yeah. He had the, this kind of love, yes, Jesus. unconditional love. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And that's the love that God gives us when we're born again. But we, listen, follow after charity. That's the agape love of God. That's, that's God's love, unconditional. Yeah. What does the scripture say? Follow after charity. That word follow after means pursue it. Pursue charity. That means you've got, you don't got charity. You've got to pursue it. It comes with the Holy Spirit in you. That's the fruit. We, we, we love to say, talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long time. Yeah, that's the fruit of the Spirit. That's not necessarily your fruit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's what you are to walk in. Most of, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's what we're to follow after. That's what we're to pursue is all of the fruit of the Spirit. If we let the fruit, that's what the fullness of God's all about. That's what perfection is all about, is having the fullness of God abiding in you. You're going to be filled with not just power, but love and forgiveness. The same kind of love that Jesus had, that he freely gave his life for murderers and thieves and homosexuals and the, the worst of sins. He freely gave his life because he had that kind of love. Thank you, Lord. And that is in us. Thank you. But we have to walk in it. You can walk in the spirit or you can walk in the flesh. If you walk in the spirit, you're going to be okay. If you walk in the flesh, what's going to happen? You're going to die and you're going to go to hell. There's, two, there's only two ways to walk, in the spirit or in the flesh. If you're walking in the flesh, what, what are you walking in? I'll get that sucker. I'll take care of him. Ain't nobody going to get by with that with me. Bless God, I ain't putting up with this kind of mess. I'm going to do. You're walking in the flesh. You're all of a sudden just walking in the flesh, see? And it can happen just like that. What do you got to do? You got to say, oh, wait a minute. Satan, you're a liar. I'm not going to give myself to you. Matter of fact, I'm going to sit right now and I'm going to start praying for that brother. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you. Now, you're talking about power. When you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to feel something come down from glory. Because now we've obeyed the Lord. Amen. Somebody said, I ain't never heard such teaching in all my life. But it's the truth. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's the truth. Yes, it is. Love the brotherhood. Again, a new commandment I'll write unto you, 1 John 2 and 8, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Listen to this. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Now I got a scripture that's going to show you how important it is to walk in the light, which is walking in love of the brethren. 1 John 1, 6. This is, what, this, this is why it's important to walk in the light. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all yes. sin. Amen. That's what happens. Oh, God. Love covereth a multitude of sins. Oh, Amen. Amen. I want the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me from all sin, but I, yes. what have I got to do? I just got to walk in the light. What was the light? The light is the love of God. That's what we got to walk in. It's his love. Yes. We've got to walk in his way, his truth, his word, his purpose. They're supposed to love one another. That is his commandment. Listen, in that other life message I preached, I took you back to what Jesus said, this is my commandment that you love one another. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. He's commanded it. 
How can we do this? We can walk in the Spirit. And when we're walking in the Spirit, another way, listen, we can recognize, if we know the truth, this is the truth, I just, we can recognize when the enemy is really talking to us. Some men think when the enemy is talking to them, it's when, you know, you, you want to go, when there's girls or something walking by. Amen. Look at y'all, look at me. That's when we think the enemy's trying to tempt us. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's when you think the enemy's trying to tempt you. And what was y'all were telling me about? Somebody said one time, like, look at them old, look at them old daughters of Satan out there walking around. Yeah. Street preacher. Look at them daughters of Satan walking around out there. You know, preaching to people. Well, after all the people left, the daughters of Satan come by, he asked one of them for a date. <laughs> You know what I mean? See ya? <laughs> you know? But if we can understand that Satan uses our emotions of hatred. If you lust after a woman, look, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery already in your heart. It didn't say just looking at a person is not lusting after a person. But when you look at a person to lust after her, begin to lust after her, that's when it's a sin. Y'all look at me strange. Yes, that's what the Bible says. Amen? That, that you've committed adultery within your heart. That's Jesus' the teaching. But just to look at somebody, even admire somebody's dress or the way they look, you know, there's some nice looking people in this world. Both men and women. There's nice looking guys. There's nice looking women. But that don't, because you see a nice looking man or a nice looking woman, that doesn't mean you're lusting after them. It's when your heart begins to lust. That's when you commit adultery. You don't have to do the very act according to Jesus. You're already an adulterer. We can understand that. But what we cannot understand is when we get mad because somebody's done us wrong, we feel justified. Because somebody treated us wrong, somebody lied to us, somebody said something about us, somebody stole something from us, we feel justified. And that's what I brought up in my situation with that preacher. I felt justified and it took Linda a long time to help me get that out of my heart. I felt justified to be mad at that guy. I felt justified to attack him. I felt justified. I felt, man, that's the right thing to do. I was wrong. But God had to show me. And then when your feelings come upon you, recognize that is the devil. You know, the devil of Satan was not the devil. You know what I'm saying? That's the devil when you feel that in your emotion, all of a sudden to hate somebody or to be violent about somebody, that's the enemy. Amen. And that's what we fail to recognize a lot of time in our walk with the Lord is because we feel justified because somebody did us wrong. This is why God's word tells us, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Amen. Amen. Do good to them. He calls a fire on their head. Yes. That's what the Bible teaches. Yes, yes, yes. So in other words, instead of striking back, do good to them. Somebody does you wrong, somebody's done going to pray wrong, I think, she gives them a big guilt. You know, and not intentionally put coals of fire on somebody's head. But things like that happen. When somebody does you wrong, you didn't cause it to happen. And you just somebody just runs you down like a dog. You know, not not somebody you, you know what I'm saying. Somebody does you wrong. Just do do good to them. Yes, yes. Pray for them. Yes. Give them a gift. Yes. Buy a hamburger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Give them a Snickers candy bar. Yeah. Amen. Get them a Diet Coke. Yeah. Pat them on the back. <laughs> You're heaping coals of fire on their head. Listen, that's God's business. Yes, Judgment is God's business. Yes, Wrath is God's business. Yes, Paying back is God's business. Yes, Lord. Amen. It's just like this. Okay. Let's just pretend we're a family right here. And I'm the daddy. And all of y'all are my children. Amen. All of y'all are my children. Amen. I'm the daddy and all y'all my children. Amen. If somebody, if I see anybody do you wrong, what am I going to tell my children? I said, don't you worry about it. Let me take care of it. Mm -hmm. 
I don't want you lashing back. I don't want you trying to get back at them. You let daddy take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. Because I love you, son. I love you, my daughter. I'm not going to let nobody pick on y'all and bully y'all around, mess y'all around. I'm going to take care of it. Y'all just, just, just don't worry about nothing. <laughs> let daddy take care of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the same with God. That's what God says here. Listen, I'll let me. I'll take care of this. Yes. You, you, if you let me, how many knows Daddy can do a whole lot better job yes. than we can? Yes, yes, yes. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. You let Daddy take care of it. It's going to be done right. Amen. Because Daddy ain't going to show no mercy. <laughs> Amen. Daddy don't like when his kids have been picked on. The Heavenly Father doesn't like when his children get picked on. But sometimes we want to fix it. We want to fight back. We want to do it. And that's when God said, no, y'all, no, let me, let me, let daddy take care of it. This, is this making any kind of sense? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This shouldn't teach you to make it easier for you to love one another. It makes it, when I'm preaching this, I feel I'm pretty easy about loving everybody right now. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but right now I feel pretty good about loving everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. One more scripture and I'll quit. I'll pick this up later. 1 John 3 and 10. In this, he's talking about walking in the light and loving your brother. Love the brethren. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of devil. Whosoever doth not righteous is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Oh. In this, the children of God mm -hmm. are, man are made known. Mm -hmm. And the children of the devil mm -hmm. are also made known. And then he says it plain. Whosoever doth not righteous is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Love reveals. Praise God. Now listen. You think about that. How can I love my brother? You work at it. Because the enemy don't want you to love your brother. The enemy does not want us to love one another. The enemy does not want us to have unity. He wants us divided. He wants your soul. He wants to take you to hell. That's his job. Yes. That's his job. Yes. And he is very smart. Preachers that talk about old dragon breath and how stupid the devil is, let me tell you something. Jesus said the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. He's a deceiver and he's good at it. He can make you feel good about what you're doing and you're, and you're transgressing God's law to you of loving one another. You can feel justified in what you do and what you say because you've listened to the devil and you can lose your soul over this. I think that's just how important it is and I think that's why John particularly and Paul was so intent on bringing about why we should love the brethren. Because they knew, they knew that this is what's going to, what has caused the division was hatred and not loving one another. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just lift my hands to you, Lord, and I thank you. Yes, thank you Father, for the word of truth, the word of thank God. God. And Lord, I, there's other scriptures, many, many more here, Lord, that I could get into this morning. But Lord, I think the point has been made. God, will help us to love one another. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to forgive one another. Lord, that you would help us to walk together in unity. Lord, I, you know I was speaking to Sister Glenda this morning. And Lord, how I, I could just see in my, in my mind's eye, oh God, such potential. Lord, and some of the brethren and sisters that's here in our little church, God. Lord, I realize we're just a handful of people, but Lord, we're a people that profess that we love you. And so Lord, I know, Lord, that I cannot say that I love you without loving my brothers and my sisters. 
God, there's many that has left this fellowship for various reasons. They've gone their way. Some have backslidden back into the world. Some have been captivated maybe by the TV preachers or something. I don't know. Some have been discouraged. Others, Lord, you know all the reasons. But Father, I pray, Lord God, that not only myself, but everyone that's here in this church would begin to act as a restorer, Lord, to help to restore, Lord, those that have backslid, those, Lord, that have left the fellowship for whatever reason, Lord, God, that they would not be lost, but they would be saved. And I pray, God, for help, Lord. We need help in our church, Lord. We need help, God, but it needs to come from you, Lord, not from the world. So I pray, Father, God, that this message, Lord, this morning would impact on all of us, Lord. And Lord, even those that might re receive this later, God, I pray, Lord, that the word of God would impact them. Whatever church that they go to, Lord, they would learn to love one another. And Lord, if they're not attending a church, God, that they would find a church somewhere. Lord, that they could assemble with your people and respect one another, Lord, and love one another. God, that we might see a moving of your spirit in these last days, a real genuine outpouring of the Holy Ghost, a revival that will bring back the return of the Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, to abide in this word, hide it in our hearts, and help us, Lord, to maintain this unity of the spirit that we might have a unity of the faith and be unified together in purpose and in vision, Lord, in Jesus' holy and precious name.